Management review as part of an ISO 9001 management system is a key part of your continual improvement process. So if you're somebody that's struggling with management review as part of the standard, understanding how that fits together as part of the cycle of continual improvement, we're gonna take you through our three tips for successful management reviews, and we'll show you what that looks like. So our three tips and tricks we're gonna go through are what we follow here at Best Practice. So if you're struggling with it, if you're feeling frustrated, if you're feeling a bit you know, fuzzy and unclear, I'm gonna demystify what that management review process is all about and what our three tips and tricks are to undertake that process. So tip number one with management review processes and undertaking you know, what the ISO standards refer to as management review is consider the frequency an effective frequency. Consider the effective frequency. So you've really got to be not overwhelming people with too much stuff. You've got to get on top of your numbers in, in a frequency that's short enough to enable you to do small things that still track you and keep you on your journey to your goals. So the core objective of management review is to, to put all the inputs together, which is how, you, how your performance is running, how you're tracking towards your goals, and, it's, and the most important part of management review is the outputs. It's about readjusting resource management, and resources are time, money, and people, if you like, and we readjust those resources to keep us uh, making progress towards our goals. Okay, so what management review looks like is what you can see here. It's our executive managers, and it's people with authority and autonomy to manage the performance of the business, getting together on a quarterly basis, with a set agenda, and more importantly, those people are prepared. Those people bring in their numbers, they bring in their reports, they bring in their performance, and they bring in their proposals to adjust and track the performance going forward. It's showing us that they own what they're doing. Okay, so tip number two for management review is about preparation. And preparation is about planning. And so what's the plan? And we talk in lots of our videos here at Best Practice about who, what, when, where, and how. The why, which you might think is missing, the why is all about our goals. So our goals are our why, our goal is our strategy. So tip number two here with effective and improving and you know, wicked management reviews, if you like, or awesome management reviews, is about planning. So it's about the participants as part of management review, not just turning up for a meeting and sitting down and saying, right, what's up? It's about coming prepared, coming prepared with a plan, coming prepared with a set of actions to negotiate. Say, right, this is how I'm gonna run this play. This is how I'm gonna do this thing. And then consulting and negotiating with the other key players that are managers on the team to ensure there's not gonna be conflict. So it's about unpacking conflicts and, and we'll get to that further on in this presentation. But it's about being prepared and being planned. And part of that preparation is bringing in the numbers and knowing the numbers, knowing the numbers knowing the goal, knowing whether you're on track or off track, and then really unpacking before you get to that management review what your proposed course of action might be so that you can liaise with the other key players that you may need assistance from to actually get those results. And that management review environment, that consultative, the consultative environment is all about the negotiations around do we think these actions are going to be effective and then pressing go on those things and moving forward. All the different key teams, depending on how your business is divided, have a small mini business plan that's on three Google Slides or three PowerPoint slides so they can present and initiate a discussion around what they're proposing to do so that they can inform the other people, you know, the teams that are each side of them and what they're going to do for, for going forward and then um, solicit some assistance from those teams uh, so that they can achieve the performance that they're forecasting and ultimately achieve their goals. Tip number three with regards to management reviews, all about leadership and influence. And it's developing the leadership skills that are required to lead that team and inspire that team towards the dream or the goal of the business. And it's all about looking at influence skills, leadership skills, communication skills, and this question that we use a lot here at Best Practice. The solution lies in the mind with the problem. So what am I saying here? What does this look like? This looks like great questioning, great open questioning. What are we gonna do about that? When are we gonna do it? How are we gonna do it? Who's gonna be involved? What resources might we need? What adjustments might we need to make to the business? 
What changes might we need to make to the business and how will we roll those things out? With good preparation and some good open questions, we're gonna put the problem in the mind of our executives, the problems that exist maybe in other parts of the business, and then start asking questions to extract and mine the solutions to get a successful result. Because often we do say that the solution lies in the room and it lies in the collective minds of the room. For executives out there, for business leaders out there, and for key strong personalities in groups, there's a tip that I learned a few years ago, and that is to speak last. So it's about putting the question out there and speaking last so that you don't bias the group with what you think the solution might be or even what you think the problem might be. Okay, so just to quickly recap on what our three tips and tricks were for management reviews. The first one was an effective frequency. And the effective frequency we run, what it looks like here at Best Practice, is we run those things quarterly. Tip number two is all about proper prior preparation and planning. And tip number three was all about effective leadership and effective leadership and influence in the context of extracting value and a return on investment from your managers. So what does that all look like? What that looks like is regular management reviews, and I'd highly recommend quarterly, with your executive team and the, the people that have the power of autonomy to lead their parts of the business, all coming together to come up with solutions that are gonna be integrated, consulted, and effective in achieving goals in the future. Those people are gonna be planning for those meetings, so they're at, they've, they've done their preparation, they've done adequate preparation to enable them to have robust discussion about how the teams are gonna to work together to achieve the goals of the business. You're gonna have an MC or a leader or a, or a, a convener, um, if you like an independent person, maybe facilitating those workshops, who's got good influence skills, good leadership skills, to keep the conversations on track and to be extracting the value from the participants, maximum value from participants in that group. You're gonna have a meeting that finishes on, starts and finishes on time that's well planned to a set agenda. And you're gonna end up with adjustment to the business in terms of a plan and resourcing that can be executed on a to-do list if you like, that can be executed on and you will see the results start to change for the better in your monitoring and measurement and a business that is marked for improvement. If you love this video, give us a subscribe, hit subscribe above on the YouTube channel, give us a like, more importantly, comment. If you've got any questions or comments, comment below in the comments and we'll get back to you and we'll answer those questions. If you want more stuff and you wanna to start to empower and grow and develop your team, we've got some great free checklists that can be downloaded from our website. Hit the link below in the description. More importantly, if you do want to empower and develop your executives around this subject matter of ISO and what's involved, some great training courses in our training academy. Again, we'll put the links below in the description so you can go and check those out on our training academy website. We will see you right here next time on Best Practice TV. Bye for now.